This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Within the not too distant future, a very charismatic religious figure will manifest himself on the world scene. And the Bible talks about him as the false prophet. Today I'd like to state a few things about that false prophet as he will reveal himself in accordance with biblical prophecy. And you might be surprised to learn how much actually the Bible does say about that false prophet and what he is going to do. But the Bible also warns that most people will be deceived. You see, the statement in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, is very important to understand. The statement that an unclean spirit or a demon will come out of the mouth of the prophet. And he will perform signs and wonders. And he will even affect the kings of the whole world. Revelation 19 confirms that the false prophet will work signs and wonders in the presence of the beast. Now the beast being another very charismatic leader, a political and military leader soon to arise on the world scene. And so they both will deceive most people. In fact, everyone whose names are not written in the Book of Life from the beginning of the world, as it says. Ultimately, we find that the false prophet, together with the beast, will be thrown into the lake of fire when Jesus Christ returns. We have a booklet. It is called The Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord. It's a free booklet. You can actually obtain a free copy if you want. And I'd like to briefly quote from this booklet, because that is what we are saying in there. This religious leader, the false prophet, will receive power to do miracles from Satan himself. He, and the system that he represents, is described in Revelation 13 as a beast with two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs. This system is also described as engaging in sorcery, as you find in Revelation chapter 18 and verse 23. Now, another scripture defines this false prophet, and this scripture can be found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 3. He is referred to as the lawless one, as a man of sin. We read that until... And unless a falling away from the truth occurs, and the lawless one manifests himself, Jesus Christ cannot return. So these are end-time prophecies. We read that according to this scripture, and I just summarize it for you now, the lawless one will sit in the temple of God, apparently a reference to a physical temple which the Jews are still going to build prior to Christ's return. He is sitting in the temple, he will claim that he is a God, or better, that he is God himself. He will come according to the working of Satan, as the scripture tells us, with power and signs and lying wonders and strong delusions to deceive those who did not receive notice the love of the truth, and who did not believe the truth, but the lie, and who had pleasure in unrighteousness. It's not only a matter of Accepting the truth by believing it, you also have to have a love for the truth. And they didn't retain that. They might have understood a little bit, but they lost it again because they had pleasure un in unrighteousness and God's commandments are defined as righteousness. And sin, by the way, is a transgression of the law, the law of God. Now Christ will consume him, as Second Thessalonians tells us, with the breath of his mouth and destroy him with the brightness of his coming, by throwing him into the lake of fire, as we have already read. So these two scriptures talk about the fate of the false prophets. Now, in describing the situation, the Ryrie Study Bible has this to say, and I, and I quote, He will desecrate the rebuilt Jewish temple in Jerusalem by placing himself there to be worshipped. This will be the climax of man's great sin of self-deification 
in open defiance of God. And the Nelson Study Bible adds, and I quote again, the man of sin will proclaim himself to be divine and will sit in the temple of God acting as if he was God or a God. The man of sin will probably stand in a physical temple in Jerusalem and declare himself to be a God, the ultimate fulfillment of the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel and Jesus. Now, of course, you find scriptures about the abomination of desolation in Daniel chapter 7, chapter 9, chapter 11, and chapter 12. And Jesus talks about it in Matthew 24 and Mark 13. But you see, there is more what the Bible tells us about the false prophet, because there is another remarkable prophecy found in the Old Testament. I'm referring to the book of Ezekiel. Because Ezekiel chapter 28 speaks about a very rich, quote-unquote, prince of Tyre, who sits in the midst of the seas. He says he is a god, but he will be killed. We read that he will die the death of the uncircumcised, in the midst of the seas, and I quote, by the hand of alien strangers and the most terrible of nations. Now, again, in our free booklet on the Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord, we point out that Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 2 identifies this modern prince of Tyre as follows. Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up. And remember, it was Lucifer whose heart was lifted up, and he became Satan the devil. See, in other words, the prince of Tyre kind of is a type of Lucifer because he is influenced and possessed by him. Because your heart is lifted up, and you say, I am a god. Or you could also translate, I am God. I sit in the seat of gods, in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man, and not a god, or you're not god, Though you set your heart as a heart of God, or though you make your heart as the heart of God, therefore, the scripture goes on to say, he will be killed. You see, this prince of Tyre is the same as the man of sin as described in 2 Thessalonians. They have the same arguments, the same thinking, the same concepts. We read that this man of sin, or this prince of Tyre, will sit in the midst of the seas, now, remember now, Italy, with the capital of Rome, is located between and surrounded by numerous seas or oceans. The Ligurian Sea, the Tyrrhenian Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the Ionian Sea, and the Adriatic Sea. Also, some of the original inhabitants of ancient Tyre migrated to Italy, where they settled in Rome. The name Tyrrhenian Sea, one of the seas or oceans surrounding Italy, has derived its name from the inhabitants of Tyre, who settled in Italy. You know, other scriptures reveal, of course, that the religious leader, together with the military leader, will ultimately move their capital to the city of Jerusalem. By that time, it seems, as I mentioned, the Jews will have built a new temple, and of course, a man of sin is going to end up sitting in that temple. Now, we have read that the false prophet, the man of sin, the prince of Tyre, will be slain by Christ himself. Now, Christ will throw him alive together with the military leader in to the lake of fire. Now, we've said that already regarding the false prophet and the man of sin, but let's also now focus on the prince of Tyre to show that this is one and the same person. Because God asked the religious leader, that prince of Tyre, in Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 9, will you still say before him, and you can capitalize the word him, showing we're talking about Jesus Christ here, who slays you, I am a god, or I am God, but you shall be a man and not a god in the hand of him, again, capitalize the word him, who slays you. And so God prophesies the following in Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 8 about this religious end time leader. They shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the midst of the seas. Now verse 8 explains that he will be thrown into the pit or the abyss. In other words, his influence on the nations will cease, and he will die the death of those who are slain in the midst of the seas. In other words, as they die, so he will die. This doesn't do away with the fact that actually Jesus Christ is going to kill him, because 
verse 10 continues in the authorized version to say this, Thou shalt die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. Now this religious leader will die in disgrace. That's what's meant by that verse. Christ will throw him into the lake of fire. In other words, a prince of Tyre shall die a disgraceful death as the uncircumcised die a disgraceful death when they are killed by the hands of strangers. That's the comparison which is being drawn. And several commentaries agree with that conclusion. For instance, Gil's exposi exposition of the entire Bible states this. Thou shalt die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. It may denote the various kinds of deaths which the inhabitants of Rome will die when destroyed, some by famine, some by pestilence, and others by fire, when these plagues shall come upon her in one day, Revelation 18, verse 8. For I have spoken it, says the Lord God, and therefore it shall surely come to pass, strong is the Lord that will judge, condemn, and destroy mystical Babylon or Tyre, making this clear connection. But Matthew Henry's commentary is even stronger, saying this, They shall bring thee down to the pit, to the grave, thou shalt die the death. And it shall not be an honorable death, but an ignominious one. He shall be so vilified in his death. He shall die the death of those that are slain in the midst of the seas that have no honor done them at their death. But their dead bodies are immediately thrown overboard without any ceremony or mark of distinction to be a feast for the fish. Tyre is likely to be destroyed in the midst of the sea, and the prince of Tyre shall fare no better than the people. It shall not be a happy death, but a miserable one. He shall die the death of the uncircumcised, of those that are strangers to God, and not in covenant with him, and therefore die under his wrath and curse. You see, the false prophet will die under the wrath and curse of God, of Jesus Christ, when he is being thrown into the lake of fire. So you have to take all these scriptures together to get a feeling as to who that false prophet is going to be and what he is going to do and how he is going to deceive the nations. And you must be sure that you are not going to be deceived because God warns you, this false prophet will be the end time leader of the Babylonian system that is being described in the book of Revelation chapter 17 and 18. And in the very verse, which I want to close this program with in Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. What does God tell you and what does he tell me? He says, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. You see, this European revival of the ancient Roman Empire is happening in front of our very eyes. It's going to be led ultimately by two charismatic leaders, the false prophet and the beast. Most people will be deceived by them, specifically through the signs and the wonders they will do, motivated by and inspired by the Satan on satanic powers. Now, you have to be sure that you are not going to be deceived by them, and only when you are close to God will you be able to restrain these deceptions and stay close to God and be protected by him when all of this is going to happen, and it is going to happen, in the not to distant future. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.